picture of how many people we've got on today. So, uh, Paul Joyce was first on, so we'll go to Paul, and then we'll go to Andy Hunter, Dave Maddock, and Chris Bascom in that order. Paul. Yeah, again, uh, last week, um, Manchester City prevented Chelsea from having a, a single shot on target in the game. Can you explain what, what City do that makes it, it difficult for opponents and what you might have to do to, to ensure that that doesn't happen to you? Because you've, you've been very productive offensively this season. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, so what probably people don't see, the, the best way to defend is to keep the ball. That's what City is doing pretty well. Um, so they have um, big mm, possession numbers, stuff like that. Uh, and they have an exceptional counter-pressing impulse, which helps as well. Um, if you lose the ball, then um, you win it back pretty early. So that helps as well. On top of that, there are different possible organizations, obviously, against us, especially they played or defended at least very often in a 4-4-2, um, even when it was a slightly offensively different system, so which helps as well in the, diff in the, in the, in the specific areas to, to close an opponent down. On top of that, they have exceptional individual quality in the, in the, in the, in the different positions, <laughs> which helps as well from, um, you know, in def with defending. Um, on top of that, that of goalie, of course, if they don't have a, 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 a shot on goal, then the goalie is not that massive influential. But if you get through, they're still a, a world-class goalie. So um, that makes it a really interesting um, mix, I would say. And uh, so that's it. That's it. That's why City won quite a few Premier League titles and uh, trophies in the last few years, um, because they're really good. And it's a clear idea. It's a clear structure with with some... Changes from time to time. I think the year, I'm not now 100% sure, but I think last year all of it, but they started defending in a 4 4 2. De Bruyne pushing up, stuff like this. Before before that, they didn't do it like it. Um, let's see what they do this year. They are, they, not only us have a day or two more to, to prepare the game, uh, they have it as well. So let's see um, what Pep um, is doing. We will see. But it's uh, the main thing, I think, is to keep the ball as long as possible. That gives the, the um, opposite team um, no chance to to finish any kind of situations off because you don't have the ball. Fantastic. Thank you, Paul. We'll Got to Andy Hunter, then Dave Maddock. Andy. Hi, Jürgen. Uh, beyond the, the the obvious of uh, putting the ball in the back of the net, um, what what are the factors uh, do you think behind this? You know, purple patch you have in front of goal, the number of goals you're scoring. Is it that you're getting the benefits of Salah and Mane having the first? full pre-season is it the better distribution from defence is it the whole package yeah what you put it down to it's a package it must be the package because everything else like yeah the pre-season helped massively for all the players who were involved in the pre-season that helped so far and will help in the in the future uh, uh, in, the, in the rest of the season because I spoke plenty of times about how essential it is that we can create a basis and a physical basis as well um, that's what we could um in a moment, we are apart from Brentford, quite stable defensively, um, which means we are that stable because we uh, work really together as a, as, a, as a defensive unit, that we are really, that the offense players defend. If you have to defend deep, we defend deep. If we can press high, we do that high and all this kind of things. So it's clear. Um, again, what we do, because what I said about last season, we had the problem that we lost, of course, rhythm by losing the centre halves and playing midfielders in the last line. And all of a sudden, nothing was like it was before. And what we did before was obviously really good. That's why we won the league in the way we did it. Um, and all of a sudden, you have in in the middle of a season, you have to reinvent your game. That takes time, obviously. We needed that time uh, to adapt to our now existing um, qualities um, and it took time but now we are we stepped not back to what we did before a little I would rather say a little bit more aside we changed uh, to, as well some things um, but we are much closer to what we did before than we were last year and so it means we have stability when you have stability you feel more freedom for the offensive stuff when you have more freedom you can you come more often in dangerous situations uh, or threatening situations and then you can score more often but to be honest when, I, when people told me now that we scored 20 goals in September or whatever 
it didn't feel like. It, it, it really just didn't feel like. I, I, I have a lot of chances, and I'm really positive, a lot of chances in my mind which we, which we missed. Um, and it's not about that, that I don't want to score 40 goals or whatever. It's just we are not even close to what we think is exactly like it should look. We just take it game by game, play as good as possible at that day, analyze it, use the information we, 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 we find in the analyze, and carry on. Fantastic. Uh, Dave Maddock for one, Chris Basson for one, then to the Sundays, uh, which we've probably got most of the hands up we can take at the moment. Dave. Uh, Jürgen, you and Pep have a a remarkable record against each other. Um, I think you've both won nine games and you you hardly ever draw, right? Um, And and it it sort of strikes me that it's one of the sort of great managerial rivalries in, in, in the best sense. Um, and there's, there's always been those in history, like in English football particularly, um, they don't. The managers who are rivals don't seem to get on, but you and Pep do, and, and you you kind of almost inspire each other, I, I think. And I, I was just wondering whether that that's the case, and, and whether you could talk a little bit about what it's like managing against him, and because they're, they're always very tactical games, and, and people don't don't always see that. I don't think. <laughs> I don't know what people see, but um, it's true. Not, not sure I ever told Pep, but I like him. <laughs> it's true, but from time to time, obviously, I annoy him with things I say in press conference, which are not for to actually to say anything bad about him or about Man City. But when somebody of the City stuff tells him Klopp said that, and I can see in in the press conference that he gets really angry. Um, Sorry for that. Yeah. But um, no, I respect him a lot. Um, and I said it before, uh, I always think it's when we, we think we know a lot about each other, but we actually don't. We, met, we meet each other for football games. We, but two years ago, I think it was, we had a few situations where we went together at Manchester most of the time, any kind of awards or stuff like this. And our families met. And I can tell you, somebody has a family like Pep Guardiola must be a good person because missus and the kids outstanding and that's what that's what is important for me so um, and during the game whatever he says whatever I say um, it's not that in, in, I want to win desperately he wants to do that and we are completely different as personality stuff like this but nonetheless I like him and um, yeah that's it pretty much and I, I respect him and it's uh, it's really a, one of the, the biggest challenges for all managers in football to face his teams because they are good <laughs> and uh, but I, I like that as well I like that as well because it's one of these games where you yeah it's like when people say about first division or Premier League Bundesliga whatever football or in Champions League football they say on this level there's no mercy for mistakes if that's the right saying so that if you make a mistake but you get punished so and that's pretty much a game against Man City always. So you better don't make a lot of mistakes because otherwise you, you will get a knock. But if you don't, at least when you are Liverpool, then you have a chance. And I really think it's interesting to give it a try. Okay, terrific. Final question in this section from Chris Bascom and then we'll go to the Sundays. And I've got all the hands up I can take from the Sundays, I'm afraid. Go on. Hi, uh, Hi. One of the things Pep said after the game last year was it Anfield with and without fans? This is a direct quote. Anfield with and without fans is completely different. I mean, th- th- there's no doubt is that that was a factor last year, and it <laughs> no. can't be a huge factor. Something. Yeah, it better is. It better is. <laughs> So I think a year or two, no, two years ago then probably, I said what we need is the atmosphere that even the the guys who sells the hot dogs <laughs> um, has to be on its toes. So, and that's what we actually need again. I, I know after that long time without each other, I don't have to ask for that. The people are exceptional since we are back. I loved each second. Um, but everybody who's in the stadium at, at Sunday knows... Um, it all makes only really sense when we do it together and I've, I, w- I really would like to say let's give it a proper try all together uh, and let's be as powerful as a unit as we can be. I know, everyone knows, we need it, but if we get it, we have a better chance. So let's make a really special game of it. Um, and yes, uh, it was obvious there's a massive difference and filled with or without. So let's set a new level for with. 
Okay, terrific. Thank you, guys. Uh,